48 crazy music facts everyone should know. In 1991, a man broke into the Florida State Capitol and blockaded himself inside. His demands included pizza, beer, cigarettes, Chinese food, weed, 666 donuts for the cops, and phone calls with Ice Cube, Timothy Leary, and Lemmy from Motorhead. No demand was met, but the standoff ended peacefully. In 1996, a 21-year-old man burst into a New Zealand radio station, took the manager hostage, claiming that he had a bomb, and demanded that Kermit the Frog's rendition of Rainbow Connection be played continuously for the next 12 hours. TLC was the first all-female group to sell 10 million copies of an album, Crazy Sexy Cool, but they weren't cool about making $50,000 each for the album, while the record company got $75 million. So they held Arista Records president Clive Davis hostage until the NYPD intervened. When Frank Zappa was a kid, he always played with mercury that his father brought home from work, often covering his entire bedroom floor with the element. Childhood exposure to mercury is known to increase the risk of prostate cancer as an adult. Frank Zappa died from prostate cancer at age 52. Musician Elliot Smith once carved the word now into his arm and sat down at a piano and wrote, everything means nothing to me with blood ripping out onto the floor. Another time he jumped off a cliff, but a tree broke his fall. Pixies singer, Black Francis's real name is Charles Michael Kittredge Thompson IV. The Pixies song Debaser was inspired by the short film Un Chien Andalou by Salvador Dali and Luis Bunuel. Wally, famous Amos, first worked as a talent agent and signed Simon and Garfunkel. He also represented The Temptations and Marvin Gaye. He would attract clients by sending them chocolate chip cookies along with an invitation to visit him. In the early 80s, David Bowie lured an unknown Stevie Ray Vaughan to play on his album Let's Dance by promising him the opening slot on his tour. However, after recording, Vaughan was relegated to backup musician and wouldn't be allowed to talk about his music. So he quit, released Texas Flood, and became a superstar instead. The 1995 Bjork song It's Oh So Quiet is a remake of an obscure B-side by Betty Hutton from 1951, which itself was a remake of a French song from 1949, Tutte Tranquille, which itself Self was a remake of the original German song Und Jetzt ist es still from 1948. The Stooges management team once tried to create some attention for the band by having Elton John dress up in a full gorilla suit and storm the stage during a concert in Atlanta. The only issue was Iggy Pop had already been partying before the show kicked off and when he saw the gorilla he freaked out and tried to fight it believing it was real. Billy Joel once got into an argument with a younger man about what the worst era to be young in was. The younger man told Joel that at least he got to grow up in the 50s when nothing happened. Flabbergasted, Joel began listing the events of the 50s, which later became, we didn't start the fire. Dire Straits' bassist John Ilsley owns a pub in Hampshire, England, which was rated as one of the 50 best pubs around Britain by the Times newspaper. He has also decorated the pub with his own paintings. Blondie's Debbie Harry once dated Penn Gillette of Penn & Teller and is said to inspired Penn's invention the Jill Jet, a hot tub whose jets were specially designed to excite the female anatomy. In the Electric Light Orchestra song, Standin' in the Rain, the string instruments at 1 minute and 7 seconds are playing a staccato rhythm that spells out ELO in Morse code. The band Steely Dan is named after a strap-on d mentioned in the William S. Burroughs novel, Naked Lunch. Cheap Trick's album Cheap Trick at Budokan was never intended for release outside of Japan, though technically the group's second album it went triple platinum and launched their success in the US. Kate Bush topped the UK charts at just 19 years old with her debut single Wuthering Heights, the first female artist to do so with a self-written song, and in 2016 she had eight albums in the UK top 40 simultaneously, the third most for any artist behind only Elvis and the Beatles. The hats worn by Devo were called Energy Domes and were influenced by the German Bauhaus movement, geometric fashion, and Aztec temples. Additionally, the band members especially like that they kind of look like Lego toys. At age 71, Leonard Cohen nearly went broke after his longtime manager and former lover stole $5 million. The theft started after Cohen entered a Zen Buddhist retreat when he retired, believing he had enough money to live there the rest of his life. Imagine renouncing the world and then being kicked out because you can't afford it. The guy getting punched in the face on the front cover of Pantera's album Vulgar Display of Power Hour, got paid $300 in total for it. The reason was because it took 30 tries to get it just right. In 1969, concert promoter Bill Graham was asked to help organize the Woodstock Festival. 
He agreed under one condition, that Santana would be included in the lineup. After Bill persisted, Santana was given a 45-minute set. The performance launched Santana to international fame. The Japanese NES game Holy Diver features a protagonist named after Randy Rhodes, tasked with finding the five emblem seals of the King Crimson family to defeat the evil Black Slayer. In the game, your father is Emperor Ronnie James Dio, your mentor is Ozzy Osbourne, and in the final level you fuse with your brother Zack Wilde. When Santana played Woodstock in 1969, guitarist and founding member Carlos Santana was tripping so hard during his set that at one point he believed his guitar neck had turned into a snake, and the only way to battle the snake was to play harder, faster, and better. In 1998, Scott Weiland, the vocalist of Stone Temple Pilots and Velvet Revolver, was busted in Manhattan buying hair dressed like a pimp. Longtime ACDC drummer, Phil Rudd, was once convicted of possessing 25 grams of marijuana, but was later let go simply because if he were convicted, he wouldn't be able to tour with the band. In Damian Marley's song, Welcome to Jamrock, the line, out in the street they call it murder, they don't say murder, but murder, which denotes the trance-like state you reach when smoking weed and listening to reggae. The line itself is actually a sample from Inni Camozzi's World of Music, Paul McCartney, Phil Collins, and Michael Jackson are the only musicians who have sold over 100 million records both as solo artists and as members of a band. Green Day got its name from the phrase Green Day, which was slang in the Bay Area where the band originated for spending a day doing nothing but smoking marijuana. Armstrong once admitted in 2001 that he considered it to be the worst band name in the world. Silverchair's multi-million selling debut album Frog Stomp was written when all members of the band were only 15 years old. The Steve Miller Band hit Jet Airliner was not a Steve Miller Band original. The song was first recorded by Paul Pina in 1973. Due to record label disputes, Pina's version of this song was not available to the public until the year 2000. The band from the movie Titanic is a real band called The Gaelic Storm. One of the members of the band once punched Russell Crowe in the face, then wrote a song about it called The Night I Punched Russell Crowe. Two of Kurt Cobain's closest friends, Mark Lanigan and Dylan Carlson, credit Courtney Love with saving their lives in the years after his death. She felt he would want them to be saved and decided to support them both morally and financially so they can go to rehab and turn their lives around. Elvis Presley and his entourage would rent out roller skating rinks to throw $15,000 worth of fireworks at each other while wearing Air Force jumpsuits plus gloves, helmets, and goggles. The song Sweetest Thing by U2 was an apology by lead singer Bono to his wife for missing her birthday when working on the The Joshua Tree. Profits from the single went to her favorite charity. Tina Turner's real name was Anna Mae Bullock. I. Turner not only invented the name Tina Turner as her stage name, but he even had a trademark so that in case she left, another singer could perform under the same name. 